just getting started with econometrics or moving into time series analysis and financial econometrics, this will be enough to get us started. So let's take a look at our short little to-do list here. We're going to go through how to download stock price and index data. So using a ticker symbol for an individual firm and an index, say the S&P 500, we're going to download those as extensible time series objects within the RStudio framework. And that's going to set us up really nicely for using more advanced time series analysis, forecasting, autoregressive moving average models, et cetera. That's all down the road. And we'll be using the quant mod package and specifically the get symbols command within that package. And again, as with everything in R, there's you know, a dozen ways to do everything. We're just going to look at one basic way to obtain uh, this financial data that we can then use. Once we have the raw data, we'll take the levels of the asset prices in the index, generate returns using the uh, difference and lag operators within R, create some simple plots just, just to show how nice uh, a plot will look uh, of time series data with these XTS objects without any bells and whistles. Um, and then we'll just run a simple regression of the asset return as a function of the market return, mimicking uh, somewhat a very simple capital asset pricing model regression. So let's jump into our studio and take a look. Okay, so assuming we're starting from scratch, right, we're going to be using the quant mod package. So you've got to use the command install packages, and it quotes, not our quantitative modeling. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to run that command. And then you've got to call it up, right? Call it the library, same thing in quotes. And now the command here is get symbols. So if you've used Stata before, this is the same uh, command package that you may have seen there. Uh, and lots of options in terms of data sources and what types of variables we're going to call up. For this example, we're just going to call up again one asset price, and then we'll do it again with the S&P 500 index, and we'll get those from Yahoo Finance. So just kind of your, your basic call up of historical financial data. So the first thing we're going to put in, the first argument in the command is the ticker symbol. So just for example, we'll call up Ford. Right? So this will be the daily information market outcomes for Ford common stock. So it'll have the opening price, the closing price, the high, the low, and the adjusted close. And I believe also the volume of trade. Um, so now we're going to, like I said, call this up from Yahoo. So the source is going to be Yahoo. And then we can also choose the time frame. So we could just run it like this without the comma, and it'll call up, I think, five years of data is the, uh, no, actually, it'll go back as, as far as data is available, as far as historical data is available, is the default. But say we want to get the most recent year's worth of data. Right? So the next argument would be the, the beginning of our sample. So we're going to get data from one year prior to today. So we can go, and you could put in a specific date, uh, but a nice trick, right, is to go sys date minus 365. So a year before today, whenever it is you're typing this in. And we'll get all the data all the way to today, which would be the most recently available data. So this date will be the end. And then what we should see is our XTS object here. And we can take a look at that. So here's the individual columns of data within that object. So open, high, low, close, volume. And the one we're going to use, the adjusted close. So that accounts for splits and dividends, et cetera, over time. And then let's do the same thing. So let's call up the same get symbols command, leave everything the same except put in caret GSPC. So this will give us the 
S&P 500 index, and that'll play the, play the role of the market uh, from an, a CAPM analysis perspective. So now we've got the, the raw data. We're going to now generate the returns for each of these variables, and then we can plot them out. So let's create a name for our variable. So this is going to come from the F XTS object. So we'll go F dollar sign, and then the name of the new column that we're going to create, let's call it F dot RET. So that'll be the return on Ford. And we're going to apply the difference operator to the adjusted close. So F dot adjusted. So that's the change from one day to the next. And we'll divide that by the lag. So it'll be the change from one day to the next as a percentage of where it started the day before. And that'll give us our very simple return calculation. So F dollar sign. F adjusted. And we should see now a new column here. So those are the returns in decimal form. And we can call up the same command again, but now we're gonna apply it to GSPC. So every time you see F, replace it with GSPC. Obviously we could just type it out again from scratch. I may be saving two seconds doing it this way. But hey, time is money, right? So this will give us our market return. There we go. And again, just to get an idea of uh, how a very simple plot can be useful. So we're not using ggplot2 or anything fancy. We can just go plot and let's do the Ford return. And because it's already a time series object, the default is going to be a time series plot with a date already uh, on the x axis. And it looks pretty good, right? It's nothing fancy, certainly, uh, but you could copy and paste that right into your document and, and you are good to go. Okay, so the last element is to run a simple uh, CAPM style regression. So let's call this linear model underscore CAPM. We don't need to be creative here, just make it up. And we're gonna call it up as a linear model and our dependent variable is gonna be our newly created asset return. So the individual asset, so that would be the F underscore RET as a function of the market return. So GSPC dollar sign. Again, that tells us which object the, we're going to pull the column from, and it's going to be our GSPC dot RET. So that runs the regression. Then we can call up the output. Let's go summary, and then the name that we applied to it. M. And the slope coefficient that we see here, that's again, a rough estimate um, of the CAPM beta, right? So how does your individual asset return relate to fluctuations in the market? And now we're off and running. So again, we can do all sorts of more advanced things based on the data that we've called up and created here. We'll save that for another day, but this is good enough to get us started. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.